Now, the latest Marquette Law School poll shows that Joe Biden has a six percentage point lead over President Donald Trump in Wisconsin among registered voters. This is down from a poll held in June when Biden had an eight percentage lead in the state. It is still above the 3.9 percent margin of error, though, for the poll. And just when you thought political parties couldn't become more polar opposite, the polls also show that Democrats are more likely, likely to vote by mail or early in person than Republicans in the November general election. 67% of Democrats say they are voting by mail or early in person versus just 27% of Republicans. Can the system handle an election that has a whole lot of mail-in ballots, way more mail-in ballots than is the norm in a Wisconsin election. That is a huge question as we go forward to November. And so it's gonna be very interesting to see how the process of counting and processing the mail-in ballots goes in this August primary. Now taking a look at tonight's election numbers, just one Democratic challenger is seeking to unseat current U.S. Representative Ron Kind. In today's primary for Wisconsin's 3rd Congressional District, Mark Newman is a retired physician who now serves as a part-time medical examiner in La Crosse County. And you can see here that Kind is already being said to be the winner at 80, with 82% of the vote. I am very proud. Uh, to receive the support and trust of the people of this congressional district. And I'm going to do everything in my power to live up to that trust. But there will be a clear choice to make this November. I have a clear plan to defeat this coronavirus and to emerge even stronger, to rebuild Wisconsin, rebuild America as we come out of this virus uh, with the crucial uh, steps that we have to take. And two candidates in today's Republican primary are vying to challenge for Wisconsin's third congressional district, currently held by Democratic incumbent Ron Kind, who you just heard from. And you can see here Derek Von Van Orden is now being declared the winner with 66% of the vote. That's over Jesse Eben. Now, this is for a two-year term. Jesse Eben of Eau Claire is a public relations um, official as well, and she was facing off with Derek Van Orden of Hager City, who is a retired Navy, Navy SEAL. Van Orden, though, told News 8 Now he has the leadership experience to represent residents in western Wisconsin. The first thing I'm going to do is show up for work, and that's something unkind have not done for a very long period of time. The second thing that I can do and will be doing is supporting the Trump administration with the implementation of the USMCA. American farmers and farmers in the third district in particular can compete with anybody around the world as long as they have a level playing field. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now moving on to Wisconsin's 32nd state Senate district. This is currently vacant. It was last represented by Democratic Senator Jennifer Schilling who decided not to run again. Three Democrats were on the ballot. As you can see here though, Brad Paff, although not declared the winner yet with only 64% reporting, he does have a heavy lead with 63%. The winner, though, will face off with Dan Kopanke, who is the Republican on the ballot. Kopanke won that seat back in 2004, but did lose it to Schilling during a recall election in 2011. Well, political expert Anthony Tregoski explains the importance of this 32nd Senate race in Wisconsin. And so this race that we have locally here could be the one that decides if the Republicans achieve their two-thirds majority. Why is that important? It's a two-thirds majority vote that can override a veto by the Democratic governor, Tony Evers. And now looking at Wisconsin's 96th assembly seat currently held by Republican Lauren Oldenburg. He has held the 96th assembly seat since 2018. The two Democrats running against him are Tucker Gretebeck from Westby, a farmer and small business owner. Also Josephine Janes, who is a recreational therapist and also resident of Viroqua. And you can see here still a really tight race with uh, Jane so far just having 52% of the vote. Now, Minnesota experienced a surge in absentee and early voting ahead of Tuesday's primary. The results of some races may not be immediately known because officials must count mail-in ballots that trickle in later under safety rules imposed due to the pandemic. Minnesota is looking at a potential of more than 850,000 mail-in ballots but here's a look at tonight's Minnesota races with the results that are currently available. So incumbent U.S. Senator Tina Smith will face or did face Democratic challengers Steve Carlson, Ahmad Hassan, also Paula Overby and Christopher Lavelle Seymour. 
in the fight to run as the DFL candidate in that race. You can see here Tina Smith easily winning with 82% of the vote. She has served in the seat since January of 2018 and did also receive the DFL endorsement earlier this summer. Now, Republicans John Berman, also Bob Carney Jr., Cynthia Gale, James Riebenstein, and also former U.S. Representative Jason Lewis, they're all vying for the GOP slot on that ticket. Lewis has been endorsed by the Minnesota GOP. You can see there he has easily won it with 79% of the vote. And now there's also a four-way race for mayor in Winona. Right now, though, just recently with 100% reporting, Joe V. Rocky is the winner with 37% of the vote. But you can see there a very tight race with the top three staying in close proximity of one another. The two top vote getters, though, are moving on to the general election on November 3rd. But of course, we'll have to wait and see because Michelle Alexander and Scott Sherman are in a virtual tie. So we'll have to wait and see who that second candidate will be.